yesterday I kind of told you guys that today was going to be about multiplying. And this is, this is all just kind of leading up and guiding towards um, later on in this chapter when there's difficult things that are new. Um, I don't have the calendar written up on the wall yet. I just realized that as I was talking here now. Um, your test is already scheduled for next Friday because the first test is on 6-1 to 6-4. And we're already starting 6-2 now. Um, I do have a doctor's appointment this Friday, so I'll generally set it up as kind of a work day for you. If, for whatever reason, that throws us off and, like, you know, makes it so we're not ready for the test next Friday, I'll definitely push it back a day or something. Um, so at least know that the test at the earliest would be next Friday. So I'll, I'll get the calendar set up as soon as I can and, you know, so you guys have something to look at, but just giving you a heads up. Okay, multiplying. Whoa, why are all my buttons on the top? Whatever. <clears throat> this is identical to everything we've done earlier this year. Really, the only thing that's being added in is that there's going to be more terms slash more variables. But the multiplying itself will be the same. You use the same ideas and methods. And we'll do these two that are down at the bottom. Um, and I don't think anybody was absent today. <laughs> it's it's kind of up this it's upside down for you guys. Uh, I make the seating chart kind of from my perspective. So, but if you guys want to put your names on there upside down, that's that works. Ooh, oh no, I don't have a seating chart to put numbers on there yet. That's why we can't use the bingo roller yet. <clears throat> um, let's see. Emma, do you want to help us start? Uh, Probably not, but we'll go with it anyway. Uh, we'll so yeah, really all I was hoping you could tell me was what should I do with this 3x squared? Hi, thank you. What should I do with the 3x squared if it's in front of that parentheses? Um, Multiply it out. Yeah. Distribute is probably the word you're thinking for. Yeah. Yep, factoring is kind of backwards. But it's, I don't care if you know the correct name or not. Um, so uh, we're going to take 3x squared and multiply it times each of these two. And that, that's what I think you guys are probably pretty familiar with. So 3x squared times, you know what, I'll write it out. Some of you like to do this in your head. If you want to write it out, go for it. I thought maybe it might be good if I wrote it out here for this first one especially to kind of refresh you. When you're multiplying, you kind of, <clears throat> I wouldn't call them like terms. You're going to multiply normal numbers together, and then you're going to multiply the variables together. So like say this instance, I don't have another normal number. So it's going to stay 3. I have two different x's. And when I multiply these together, I add their powers. So this would become x to the fifth. The second one, I have two normal numbers. So I'm going to take the 3 times the 4 and make it a 12. And then I have an x squared, but no other variables to multiply it with, so it just stays x squared. 
Now, yesterday we were doing a lot of adding and subtracting, and <clears throat> a few people were trying to do multiplication in their head. Um, so it, it is, it's not like it's hard to get them confused between each other, but when you're doing multiplying, the power gets bigger. When you're adding and subtracting, the power stays the same. It's like a counter. Um, anything on this first one? This was kind of more of a refresher as to what you're doing with it. So second one. Um, Emma, why don't you pick somebody that you're thinking is, I don't want to say genius level. Okay, that works. Stella, I was hoping you could guide us on what to do when we have more than one level. Uh, one letter. You do? And I can certainly help guide you if you want it. I was just, I figured I'd give you the chance to shine. Yep, so we've got an AB that's being multiplied out to all three terms. So how do I take, and I, I can write them out underneath, I'm going to take AB times A cubed. I'm going to take AB times 3AB squared. And then I'm going to take AB times B cubed. So some people like to do this in their head, some don't. It's just, I'll write it out for us. Do you want, do you want some guidance? You sound like you have an educated guess. Perfect. Perfect. So if you have more than one variable, you generally can only multiply the like variables together. Like, the final answer is going to have all the variables together, which, awesome, by the way. So I, I didn't give any guidance at all. Great job. So if I have a, b times a cubed, we're going to have four a's and a single b. So these are still multiplied together. You just combine them if they're like variables. Um, Estella, do you want to choose somebody for the middle one to help us out? Yeah, Should we just make our way through the hockey team? <laughs> So I would start, three. yep, perfect. I was going to say I would start with the regular numbers, and there's only one of them. Good. Perfect. You kind of approach it one thing at a time. They're, they're all multiplied together, and they're all still one term. But when you're combining, you only combine like things together. OK. Um, next person? I don't know. I don't either. That's why you're calling on him. Yep, good. How many B's? Four. Perfect. Because you have one of them and three of them, so you add them together. Good. I mean, this is the final answer. Once you, once you remember how to do this, um, I think a lot of you will just directly do this step in your head. Thank you. Uh, if somebody does need a different seat at some point, like there's a couple open ones, so. <clears throat> How'd this go? Is this, this probably a refresher for you, obviously. We've done it before, but I'm hoping that this went slow enough to remember it. Okay. Then let's, let's move up a little, a notch. Not that it's harder, but. Who did it? Zach, you did the last one? Somebody you want to call on? You guys are branching way out. At least Katie went a few desks away. Um, I guess you probably probably Do you want, I, and I can certainly guide you. I, I'm just trying to give you the chance to go first. I was going to say foil, but I... Oh, I, I think most people would understand what you mean when you say foil. Um, yeah. Correct. Foil doesn't work unless it's two things and two things. But... Um, 
I often use that word to mean the same thing too. So FOIL just means that you multiply everything out. So we're going to take this first X, multiply it times the other three things, and then we're going to take this negative 2 and multiply it times the other three things. And that, that's kind of what foiling was. We just multiply everything times everything. Um, so our answer will have six items. So x times 1, x times 3x, Would you guys like me to write it out like I did on the last problem where I kind of wrote the work with it? Okay, I can do that. Let me back up a step here. So we've got x times 1. We have x times 3x. We have x times x squared. Um, and then we're going to take negative 2 times 1 negative 2 times 3x, and then negative 2 times negative x squared. And I'm going to write it that way so we don't get the signs confused. Okay, so x, 3x squared, x cubed, 2, um, 6x, plus 2x squared. So we've got a bunch of different things that we can combine together. Um, Jack, who's going to help me combine them together? So Zena. Excellent. Okay, Zena, can you help me put together add and subtract like terms? Why would you sit back there then? Well. It is no different than it was three seconds ago. Do you want me to scroll up? Like, um, okay. How come? Ah, so if we're multiplying, that'd be three x to the third. Okay, so that's why I was curious where you got that from. So what I would do is I would start with the highest powered things. And this is my only x cubed. So I'll write that first. So this is standard form. And then if I'm adding, subtracting, I'm going to look for squares. So the, like, this is what we'd be considered like terms. So I've got three of the x squareds. I've got two of the x squareds. How many of the x squareds would we write then? Five. So when you're adding and subtracting, you only add and subtract the counter number in the front. The variable is just what you're counting. And then um, I've got regular x's. So that's minus 5 of the x's. And I've only got one normal number. OK, very good. Um, Absolutely, it can get confusing when you start doing multiplication because you have to do multiplication and then later addition within the same thing. Does it have to be in standard form? No. I'm just, I'm always going to write it in standard form so you get used to it. Um, I, on the test, there'll be a couple questions that say, how would you write this in standard form? So then that one, yeah. But otherwise, no. Any, any kind of questions on what's up there? Okay. Do you guys want to try this one on your own? Do you think you can handle that one? So it's three things times three things. When you're done, there should be nine items. And then you combine together all the like ones. T take a couple minutes to see if you can do that. And I'll, I'll definitely guide you through it afterwards. Wait, shoot. 
There's supposed to be 36 people. We're missing one person. I don't remember marking anybody gone. Maddie's outside. She's not on here. Got her. Not that you need to. I'll try to color code this to see if so you guys are recognizing where things are coming from. If there are two answers, write both of them. Okay. If there's not two answers, then just write however many there are. have to work not to put this on two lines. Wait, I forgot a letter. This was minus X. Okay, so I, I have the nine correct things you should have written down if, if you want to need to check yours first. Um, I tried to color code them so you could figure out where they came from, but so the x squared was the first thing I multiplied times the other three. I did that in black. Then I took the three x times the other three things in red. And then I took the negative five times the other three things in green. Once you have the nine things written out, then you're going to want to look for, you know, which ones have the same powers so you can add their or subtract them together. So there is only one x to the fourth. I have seen students in the past, you know, when there's a lot of things written out, they kind of get stuck um, or like forget what they used. You are more than welcome to kind of cross things out as you use them, if that helps you. So I did x to the fourth, so now I'm going to do x cubes. So I've got negative 1 plus 3, so that's 2. And that's the only x cubes, so I've got 2x cubes. And then I'll cross them out because I know I used them. That way I won't forget any terms. Yeah. And when you're 
Correct. So when you add and subtract, you add and subtract the numbers in the front, the variable stays the same because the number in the front is like a counter. Um, just how many of the thing you have. When you're multiplying, that's when both things get bigger. And yeah, it, it takes a little while to kind of keep it straight in your head. So then I'm going to go to x squareds. So I've got 1 minus 3. So 1 minus 3 would be negative 2 minus 5. So I have negative 7 of the x squareds. And then now I'm going to go work down to the next power. So regular x's, 3 of the x's, 5 of the x's would make 8 of them. And then I only have one normal number, minus 5. Now, in my own personal opinion, if you were able to get this one correct, this is generally about as difficult as they'll come for you because there's so many places to make mistakes with like plus and minus signs and things like that, that a three things times three things, so a trinomial times a trinomial, um, is really easy to make mistakes. This is generally as difficult as you'll run into, um, unless you're purposely given something bigger, but you, you'll generally never naturally run into that. So if you got this right, I would consider that a great job. Like, there's a lot of places to make mistakes. Somebody want me to go over where anything came from? Okay. I can. Now, you don't need to do it this way, but I have had students in the past where this is called horizontal multiplication. And um, I definitely have had students in the past that this just doesn't click with them very well. So there's different ways you can multiply things out, too. So like this box is kind of like an alternative way to do this, a table. Um, this is the exact same problem we just did, where I would write each term above like a column or a row. So x squared minus x plus 1 times x squared plus 3x minus 5. And this is a way for some people to help organize themselves. So x squared times x squared would be x to the fourth, x squared times negative x. So then they would know to fill in each one of the boxes. And then like terms always happen like on a diagonal. So if, um, if you're finding you're having trouble doing it the way we just did it together, like, this is a certainly another way I can help show you guys how to do it. Otherwise, um, oh, I wasn't going to leave. It looks like some of you guys are writing this down. Should I leave it up there for a little bit? I can do that. This is, this is it for this portion of today. So these problems, I wasn't necessarily expecting a lot of trouble, but it's easy to make small mistakes. Um, these just usually go pretty slow. So that's kind of why I set it up to give you guys some time to work today because these questions go really slow. And then I'll, I'll get it set up in Schoology here today um, with the recording and everything. Question? Oh, okay. Um, how about this? If you're copying this table down, I'll post the notes in Schoology if you want to use to copy the rest of the table down. And then here's the assignment. It's not many questions, but they don't go fast. So um, I'll be glad, gladly help you guys out with whatever here during the hour. I'll try to set up the seating charts so we can assign numbers for rolling. 